Yo, so today, I'm like clearing out my hard drive still, compiling all this stuff. I got enough things to, I think, make like a whole, like tell the story of my first car. I think a lot of people nowadays don't care about driving, they don't care about the first car, they don't care about any of that stuff. Like they don't have an urge to go get their license as soon as possible. So a lot of people won't understand it. But um, those people are not living a fun life. In every aspect of your life, you should, if you're a fun person, you should crave adventure. And your, your method of transportation is another one of these giant facets of your life. It's like most people's second most expensive purchase, basically, is their car. It's like, why would you not want to take on the adventure of, of that avenue? So, you know, fun people are, are like into cool cars. They're not into boring cars. They want something fast. They want something, something low. They want something powerful. They want something that looks good. And, you know, all the real ones. Like, if you just look around and look at, like, kids. Look at who's into cars. Look at who's not. That'll tell you who's, like, actually you know, gonna live a fun life. And around the time where I was like 10, 11, 12, that was when I started like thinking about like, okay, what is my first car gonna be like? Cause it's coming up. And you know, when you're that age, like anything is possible. And I'm like, oh, this, I wonder if the, like the that fake Audi concept car, like the flying car one with like the speakers for wheels. I wonder if that's gonna be like a thing by the time I'm 16. Not that we would have been able to afford it or anything, but it just, you know, it's, it was fun just going on Google Images and just looking at pictures of different cars. Especially when I was 12, that's when I really started bugging my parents. Like, I'm sure they remember, I would ask them repeatedly, like, what car am I going to get? What car am I going to get? All the time. And my dad, in like 2009 or something like that, he got a Lexus ES330. A 2005 Lexus ES330. Black Diamond Edition. Lexus is a really popular among Indian people. Like, if you want, if you have a Lexus and you want to sell it, you want the best price for it, Post it on some like Indian Facebook group. You'll get the best price. You think about the kind of people that like Indian immigrants are, right? They're detail oriented. They're all good at math, hyper focused on cutting costs and budgeting and all that stuff. And they're ambitious. So it's like you, you take that into account and, and you know which group to trust. They're not going to be manipulated by all like the marketing of like Mercedes Benz or whatever. Lexus truly is the most like reliable all round it's the best all round car for the price by a huge margin too actually better than nissan better than i mean it's the same as toyota but toyota for the same price you can get a lexus that has heated and cooled seats plus power seats plus power operated everything more space in the back seats and a better sound system and a smoother ride and a better looking car on the outside like you can get all that for literally the same price you just can't get new cars because new Lexuses are expensive. You have to get, you know, like the ones that are 10, 15 years old. But it's straight up, like, I'm, it's not even that it's better than these cars. Lexus is so much of a better deal than these cars. For the same price, you will get more car for your money. Better than Honda, for sure. Better than Infiniti, which is also just Nissan. So all these, like, pragmatic groups of people in America like Indian immigrants who don't have much money, but who are, they're, they're making money, but they're trying to be as cost effective as possible. And they're trying to raise families and things like that. They scoop up these cars like it's nothing. They buy all these Lexus IS, ES, GS model, like everywhere. I was like nine or something when my dad bought it. I literally don't even remember. It was such an unremarkable car. It was so slow. It was an automatic. It didn't have paddle shifters, but it had the uh, Teptronic or whatever it is. And actually, you know, when you're like 16 and you're driving your car and you want to be cool, so you want to use a Tiptronic, you want to use paddle shifters, you want to use whatever you have, even if it's less efficient, slower. Like the Tiptronic didn't even listen to the to the driver. Like it would just, it, would, it was basically an automatic the whole time. Dude, it would not downshift for me. Like it just wouldn't go. I'd be at like 3,500 RPM and, and the car would be like, oh, downshift? Oh, well, wouldn't dream of it. It was such a pussy of a car. And at a ton of miles, it was always used for uh, road trips. My dad drove it a lot, and then my brother got the car as a hand-me-down. And then when he graduated from high school, my dad bought him a brand new 2015 S550 GT, specced out to the max, like most expensive paint color, ruby red, all that stuff. It was like $1,360 $1, more or something like that than like the base coat. Leather seats, best sound system. 
it was like $45,000 for this car. I, I didn't think it was like a bad deal, but now I realize like you can get the same thing for 20K. But then again, like car prices have gone up so much since then that I, I, I'm not familiar with car prices anymore. I've lost my expertise in that. At that time I was 14 and I thought that was like the coolest car ever. Like it was so fast, so much power. The power was like angry, it was incredible. I'll never forget the first moments where I experienced like that kind of V8 power in that car. because. Before that, I had not gone to any of these car meets. I had not done any of this stuff. Like this was the angriest car, like the most pers most personality I've ever seen in a car up until that point. And it was stick shift too. That's everything, dude. So I was 14 at the time. Then I turned 16 and I needed a car because my parents want me to go pick up groceries. They want me to go drop off my grandparents to Kana and all that stuff. They want me to drive to school on my own. So naturally, they gave me the hand-me-down from my brother, the Lexus 2005 Lexus ES330. And now by this time, the car had been abused to hell. Ran through multiple times. Piece of junk car. But I loved it. Dude, I would race it every chance I got. Any possibility to race anyone, I would take it. I floored it at every green light. I had so much fun. And it would take forever to get up to speed because of how much I was abusing the car. But once I got up to speed, it was amazing. See, the great thing about these Lexuses is, is how underrated their luxury is. Like we bought a $35,000 Mercedes later, like in like 2012 or something like that. And it had, you know, heated seats and the heated seats had three settings. You click the button and then it goes down. Not in the Lexus. The Lexus had heated and cooled seats, both. And it was a knob that you turn, you twist it to your exact liking. And I always had my seat on cool. It was always, even if it was like winter, cause you know, I turned the hot air on, but my back needed to stay cool. Cause like, you know, the sweat, I didn't want sweat stick into my clothes. So I would always keep it like at a very specific area in the knob. And, and that's just how I would drive constantly. Actually, it's not even, I'm not like a sweaty dude or anything. It just, when you're racing, you sweat. And I was always racing. And I also got pulled over a lot. I, I crashed into a Nissan 350Z with Faison in the back seat. We were like on our way to some, no, we were coming back from some photo shoot, I think. Yeah, it was my fault. I got so many speeding tickets too. I was always, almost always one point away from uh, having my license suspended. I remember there was one time where I actually went beyond that and I got the speeding ticket when I was one point away, but later on the exact same day, that was when my six month thing hit. So it was like, I think I had, I was supposed to have my license suspended for like a day, but then it, it was back up. I, I used to get away with a lot of stuff too, but there was this one time, oh my God, the whole school bus saw me getting pulled over. It was on our way back from school. I was dropping off Kenneth and Faze on, I got pulled over for doing 68 and a 45 on this road that everyone goes 75 on. But even still, like I was literally slowing down like the moment I saw the cop and I still got hit with 68, which was two miles away from super speeding on that road. And the cop like surprisingly was chill enough to give me a warning. Honestly, bro, fuck the speed limit. Like I paid for the whole speedometer, I'm gonna use the whole speedometer to the electronic limiter at least. And every day coming back from Kane, I would hit 125 miles per hour. It was like tradition. My friends would like make memes out of it because we all had Life360 and you could see each other's location at all times, which was like the main thing. That way we didn't need to ask each other like, yo, how far are you? Whatever, we could just check their location, right? Life360 is an amazing app. We're not gonna start using it again, but I wish we would. The thing is, Life360 is made for parents tracking their kids. So it shows you it shows your trips, but on top of that, it shows you the top speed of the trip and like the average speed. So we'd look at what everyone's top speed was like once a week or something like that. And it would be like Faison, 72 miles per hour, Zoeb, 68 miles per hour, Raheem, 75 miles per hour, AK, 80 miles an hour. And then Afraz, 132 miles an hour. That shit was hilarious. Like I was at Cafe and Octane one time and like Raheem came up to me and he's like, what is this Afraz? And he showed me my thing and it's like, on this trip, Afraz had an average speed of 588 miles per hour, which is like a joke because I was on a plane actually, which is stupid that Life360 still considers that a trip. But it was like, those were the kinds of jokes that we were able to make because of how much I would speed. But yeah, when I when I got the car, it had a uh, it had a broken subwoofer in the back. It took a while, but eventually, you know, you adapt like to listening to that kind of music and like at that level. And then I learned to love it. Also, this car didn't have a fucking aux cord. It had a cassette tape player, which, I mean, you can't complain about that. Dude, this car was a 2005. I don't I don't think people were really listening to cassettes like that in 2005. We could listen to Hannah Baker's cassettes, but um, yeah, I never listened to a single cassette in that in that thing. We got that adapter. Is this, look, look. See? 
Oh yeah, there's a disc thing over, over here. We never use that either. I had to put it on tape. I'm still confused on how that even worked. But yeah, I had to put the thing on tape and then use the aux. A problem with cassette, like adapter things, which happened multiple times. I don't know if I had two defectives in, in a row because I broke one of them, but I think this is like a problem with the adapter, like just in general, is that when you reach a higher RPM, for some reason, there's like a high pitched noise that it makes. I think it was just like, it was getting too much electricity. It was just being overloaded. Like, I don't think the car was very intelligent in partitioning its power, you know? But um, instead of being concerned about the high pitch, like the high pitch noise would go up as your RPMs went up. So it, we were never like concerned about it. We were just like little kids just memeing around. We'd be like, oh, that's the supercharger wine, bro. Don't even worry about it. Everything's okay. But man, like I'm, I love that car, man. Like when the insurance company took it away and I saw it one last time to like pick up my stuff like from the car and then drive home. Like I thought nothing of it when it was happening. Cause I'm like, we're getting so much money from this car. The car's worth three grand. We're getting seven grand out of it. And then when I got home, my mom, was standing there as if she like she was like waiting for me and all of a sudden I started crying like uncontrollably I didn't even see it coming I didn't even feel like crying I didn't I like even as I was crying I couldn't even believe that I was it was literally out of my control and my mom hugged me and she's like I knew this was gonna happen and I'm like I didn't know this was gonna happen look at all this shit bro I'd always be like adjusting some shit like nigga it's a highway you put some fucking hands on the steering wheel man I ate so much stuff like the whole damn car is my dining table I talked before about how like in high school and I'd come back from school I wouldn't even come home I would just go straight to the movie theater watch movies for like six to eight hours and then afterwards I would just like go get Zaxby's and then just chill at the top of the AMC parking garage and just eat Zaxby's off the roof of my car. I don't eat like the ranch. I don't eat most sauces like that. I would take the ranch and like try to aim it to like pour it as cars are driving by. So like every winter I would get all the chocolate stuff, right? Like Hershey's drops, Dove pieces, all that stuff. And I put them in the door storage and then eat them while I was driving. I was also super generous. I gave them to the everyone that I rode with and I, I was the best Uber driver. I had two micro USB chargers, two USB-C chargers, one USB-C mini for my GoPro and four iPhone chargers. And one of the iPhone chargers was for myself, but like anyone that wanted a ride, like we rode in luxury, dude, all paid for by my mom's credit card. But in the spring and the summer, I would ditch the chocolate, but I'd bring on like the sour punch straws, gummy worms. But most of all those, you know, those little, um, sweet tart, like BB pellet things. That was a perfect car snack. Cause they all tasted the same. I, I'm usually picky about the colors, but dude, even at night, like I wouldn't even look at it. I would just grab a bunch of them. They wouldn't melt. And I would finish like a bag every week. I stocked up all the time. I just ate junk nonstop. And I had the important stuff too, which I wouldn't eat regularly, but I would have in case I run out of other stuff or, you know, I didn't feel like, like I would have a bag of beef jerky always. I'd have pretzels. I'd have a case of water bottles. Like dude, when we went to clean culture at the infinite energy arena, it was hot as fuck. Those water bottles like saved my life. And also I, I told that story at the Mike and Swerve New Year's party in like 2017 or something. They ran out of water halfway through. I brought the case of water bottles inside. They didn't even ask me. I ended up throwing water at the crowd from my bottles. Like I saved those people, bro. Even after my bottles were taken sparingly, only for the people who like absolutely needed it. By the end of the night, there were still multiple people that were like borderline passed out, like begging for water. I fucking saved their lives. All thanks to like the attitude that I had with this car. I kept clothes in the back, like so extra socks, extra t-shirts, extra sweatpants, like just stuff that would come in handy if I had to like stay overnight somewhere. Oh dude, the fucking windows, holy shit, I forgot. I don't know if anyone else had this problem. I'm sure a lot of other people had this problem actually, but the rear windows, sometimes the front windows, but mainly the rear windows, they like needed to be charged. So like if you roll them down, you have to wait a little bit. If you roll them up immediately, they'll only roll up like a millimeter and then stop. And then you have to wait like five minutes to roll it back up like another few centimeters. And it was the ultimate troll for someone in the back seat. It's like in Halo 3 when you click X to stop the countdown. This was like that times a thousand. We'd be like about to park, right? And like go into some place and some dumbass sitting in the back seat would roll down my window all the way knowing full well we can't roll it back up. And we'd all yell at him because we'd be like, bro, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why would you do that? As we have like, because we have to drive around again because I have to get the alternator running to like get the battery for it back up. In the process, I'd like speed the fuck out of the car. Like as I'm driving, 
He's like, okay, moving it back up like inch by inch. And then I'd park and then he'd roll it down again. We'd have to do it all over again. One, go! Oh yeah, and the car had a, uh, had a sunroof as well, which is like, that's, there's a few things you have to have in your first car. A sunroof is one of them. Cause I'd be hopping out of it, like recording videos, stick my head out the top, like do little puppet shows. We'd like sit on the roof of the car with our feet inside the sunroof and like long drives, like slow drives and like back rows, just like thinking philosophical thoughts. And I actually got really good at doing that where like it was less sitting on the top part. I was sort of leaning on the top part of the sunroof and I was standing like my feet were on the car seat and I would have the car in cruise control and I'd go around the neighborhood like that. I got really good at being in cruise control while steering the car with my feet. Yeah, this is... I honestly don't even know if this guy was trying to race us, but we did it anyways. That's me right there. And, and like, okay, look, there's a time and place to race your car, but it's like, it's very short, brief moments. The majority of the time, the car was slow. It had a lot of body roll, which meant swinging it, like swerving lanes. That was really fun. We did that a lot. The majority of the time that we were like, just driving around, we were doing chill stuff like this, right? And because my car, like that's the IS right there, that's Nair's IS, but because we had so much, I had so much body roll in this car, I had way more fun swerving than he did. And actually a lot of times we would just be like driving fast, we wouldn't really race anyone in particular, but we were like, we'd find these roads and we just flip that shit. It's like, this is not that far. Like, I mean, this is not that fast. It's just constantly flooring it. And that's what's great about these kinds of cars. They're more fun than they are fast. Like, dude, I'm only going like 100. See, 110. Don't get me wrong, I did push the car, right, to its limits sometimes. This was on the way back from Kane, I believe. Do I go to 120 in this video? Mm, I slowed down, damn. I, I would usually not record when I, when I go to 120, 125. It's like your first car, like you don't want it to be super luxury, but you want it to have some luxury features. And one of those features is it has to have a sunroof. And I'll admit, like this was a little, a little excessive actually. You don't need a car this nice to be your first car. Like I had like the glossy wood for the steering wheel. This is just a video where I was like sending it to like somebody in squad like, oh, where are you at in the parking lot? And like I had the blind spot mirrors. Of course it's all aftermarket. I had like this thing. That, like the phone holder right here. I had a few different kinds of phone holders. This is a name tag from, I don't even know where. I just stuck it right there. Um, oh yeah, that thing popped out like halfway through me owning it. But like, look at this gloss wooden trim and all that. Like it was solid luxury for the time. Also, one of the things that you want in, which is really hard to like judge, one of the things that you want in, in a car, in like a first car, like if you're giving a first car to your kids, you'd want them to have really good AC, which the, like car companies don't market how good their AC is, but you can look up the specs. Also spacious back seats, because they're gonna be driving around a lot of people. Um, I mean, girls would have liked the back seats, but they just hated the car in general. They hated everything that I did to it. I didn't really mind though, I thought it was hilarious. See, to the kids watching this, right? Contrary to what you might be thinking, girls don't like fast cars. They actually don't like when you drive recklessly. Take it from me, all right? A person who learned through experience. Speeding is something you do when you're alone or when you're with the boys. Girls are not cool like that, most of the time. Sometimes you'll find a cool girl who's actually with the shit and that's when it's like, she's wifey material. But most like modern women are like pathetic. Like they have been taught to find fun, adventurous guys unattractive. Oh, small dick energy or whatever when guys want to have fun. It's like they're, 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 and they're NPCs, they're brainwashed. They're not like that naturally. I took my like little cousins a bunch of times, different little cousins for like rides in my brother's Mustang and stuff like that, or like other nice cars, my Subaru WRX and stuff. And they love it. They're like, oh, I don't want to drive this car. I, what about the car that has like the stick thing in the middle? Like these girls love it naturally, but they're brainwashed as they grow older to hate guys who are like, who actually want to do something with their lives, who actually seek adventure in all avenues of their life. So it's like the fact that the car did not impress girls was not, it, it says, it says more about the girls today than it does about the car because it was like 
It, dude, a ton of people have stories about that. Not just me. That car in particular, her name was Shaniqua. And if you can't, you know, just use your intuition to guess why she was named Shaniqua, then uh, you got to pay closer attention. I already mentioned the car had been ran through, beat up badly. I crashed it so many times, dude. I made dents on every single corner of the car. All corners plus all the sides. I, I, wait, I don't think I made a dent on... No, I didn't make a dent on the front of my car. But I let Noah Elias, the Ethiopian dude, drive my car and he crashed the front of my car. So he made a dent on it. The only corner of the car that didn't have a dent actually was the driver's side. Not the driver's side. Like the rear left side of the car was the only side that didn't have a dent. But that's because it had a dent, but I fixed it. But it was unintentional. I didn't. I fixed it because I pulled out of a parking lot too fast to chase after like a GTR. And I wasn't looking. And me and Raheem were like playing tag with our cars, basically. Well, not like tag. Like we're not like touching the cars. But, you know, we're like driving around like chasing after each other and stuff and uh he was driving on that road that i was pulling out of the parking lot from and he crashed into my car at that very spot that fixed my dent which is like that kind of thing will happen if you crash as much as i did eventually it's just inevitable that one of the crashes will actually fix a part of your car it made the dent pop up to its original state to be fair the marks were still there like around that dent like the paint had been peeled off but it looked like normal again oh yeah I also keyed the car a ton. This is me keying the car. See that yeah. little line right there? I'm going real light with it. And I'd let other people key the car too. See, look, you can see like the mark right there. You see that? It's hard to see in this video. Uh. You gotta do it harder than that. <laughs> no, no, don't make shapes. Don't make shapes, don't make shapes. Don't notice. Don't notice. No, 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 no. no. A <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean like the car already had so many scratches so it was fine. Keying in the car was sort of my way of ensuring that the car was mine and nobody else's. I was leaving my mark on it because I didn't I didn't mind if that car had scratches on it. Like of course like it would sell for less and like the, the next guy would probably be annoyed but like I don't care about the next guy. It was mine. This is my car. The next guy can fuck off. I don't know what he drew. He might have been drawing a smiley face but I couldn't tell i let quite a few i let at least four girls maybe more it's hard to remember i let at least four girls like draw hearts on it that one was kind of stupid that one i regret a little bit because it's like these girls were not down for me like they they did not deserve to to leave their mark on my car i was just a fucking simp and then like a week later i got kicked out of school and i never saw those girls again if i had continued talking to those girls and they like reached out to me then i don't think it would have been a problem to have their key, like to have them key my car. It's annoying that I didn't clear up my hard drive earlier because I grouped up a lot of this stuff the wrong way. I showed the videos of when I parked my car outside Zoeb's house that one time. We walk out to go to like Walmart to go get like cookies or some shit, like the normal shenanigans. And actually, like on that day, I was actually thinking about like letting Naira or someone drive my car and I would just hop in the trunk. And then I noticed the driver door has a giant fucking dent in it. And not even, no, it was the whole door. The whole door smashed in. And naturally the guys all come outside and they're like, Afraz, what did you do? And you know what? It's understandable that they thought it was me. But for the first time, it wasn't me. But yeah, for like the next like two months, I drove the car, I had to enter through the passenger side door, but I went to school, I went to Khan and all that stuff. I couldn't even open the window actually. I could open the window like a centimeter, but that's it. I had to do that every single time. I had to go into the passenger seat and hop over the center console every time I wanted to get in or out of the car. And I loved it. It was inconvenient as hell, but there was something so satisfying, like taking care of something that you're responsible for, regardless of its flaws, if that makes any sense. Anyways, the insurance company for the other was like, oh, we'll pay for the damages, no problem, all that stuff. And it was probably like $1,000. Well, it turns out when my dad bought the car, like I said, he bought the Black Diamond Edition, which gave this really cool black paint with like a rainbow sparkly shine when you looked at it close. And it also had like the branding everywhere, floor mats and all that stuff. Turns out it was actually a super rare car. I've only ever seen three other Black Diamond Edition Lexus CS330s like that in my whole life. Cause they have this like badge on the side. Once you see it, you'll notice it. And the paint was a proprietary paint that was only for that car. And the insurance company, like they did not know where to find that paint. And so they decided like, Okay, this car in its entirety, after being used and abused and put through hell, is now worth like two and a half thousand dollars or so. And that's so unfair of them. They're way off. It was worth way less than that. Like the amount of shit that I did to that car that I kept a secret from my insurance company, the radio broke, the seats were tearing apart. And it's like we didn't really, people would still sit 
on the torn seats and tear them even more. The windshield had like so many cracks in it from like beforehand, from before the crash. The the wipers didn't work half the time. The uh, taillights would sometimes not turn on. Like the insurance company thought I crashed my car like three times or something like that. Man, if only they knew. I'm not even trying to like, you can make fun of me for this or whatever, but it's like, this is how I treated my car. Like this is, I do this again. This is like the philosophy of how my, I live my life. I, I want to live far below my income level. So if I'm making enough money to afford a Mercedes, I'm buying a Toyota. If I'm making enough money to afford a Porsche, then I'll buy a Mercedes. If I'm making enough money to buy a Bugatti, then I'll buy a Porsche. And if I'm making enough money to buy 10 Bugattis, then I'll buy a Bugatti. Like I'm going to live to where I don't need to worry about the material possessions I have because they're just tools to me. Like, none of them are worth wasting my time, uh, like, getting upset over. Like, you know how, like, all these, like, rich rappers are like, oh, don't touch my shoes, you'll get them dirty. Like, nah, dude, wear your shoes around my home. It doesn't matter. Like, I'm rich enough to where I'll have them made clean. I'm not at that level. But I'm saying, like, whatever I have, I want to treat it like it's so far below me that I'm the one that deserves to enjoy it. A lot of people, like, treat their homes like museums. It's dehumanizing to kids to be like, oh... We're going to put all these little materialistic things on a pedal, these Karens, these like normie moms that are like, oh, we're going to do all these things. We're going to spend all this money on this stuff rather than spending money on your adventure. We're going to spend $70,000 renovating our home when we could spend $70,000 sending you to this country for three months and this other country for three months and you get to go see these people and meet these people. No, 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 no. Fuck your adventure. We're going to buy, we're going to make sure we have a nice vase at the front of the home and, and a nice uh, sofa over here. But it's a sofa that you have to sit on a certain way so that way it doesn't break. It's like, dude, sofas are made for sitting on. People spend their money to make their lives more inconvenient. The first thing I'll buy with my money is peace of mind. I'll buy everything else later. Like all these rappers like talk about like being rich or whatever, but it's like, you're so fucking poor. You can't even afford to walk around comfortably in your own house wearing whatever you want. Like people spend money to look rich, not to be rich. To be rich is to rid all the things in your life that you have to worry about, not add more stuff to it. If my net worth doubles, the first thing I'm going to do is not buy a house twice the size as my current one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, everyone is allowed in this house. Open door policy. Jump on the couches. Jump on the beds. Mess the place up. Have fun. Dick around. Stop stressing. So like in order to get really good parking spots that like in all honesty weren't parking spots, I would like park in the bushes or like up against a light pole. And by the way, I learned how to reverse park in reverse until I hit a brick wall. So that way I can get my bearings. Whenever I get groceries, like just for fun, I would push my cart really hard and let it roll all the way into my car. And then it would hit my car and, and people would be like, oh, you can't let it hit your car. And I'm like, why? Like stop thinking in the matrix for a second. Like what's going to happen? I'll get a few scratches on my car. Oh, well, who cares? Live a stress-free life. The car can take a beating. It doesn't matter. I had no problems driving over curbs or traffic cones or even like put, you know, curbing my wheels. Putting bubbles in my tires was annoying to deal with. But if it was like, you know, just a cosmetic thing and I didn't have to change my tires, I would not have any problem with that at all. And I wasn't the only one. Other people crashed my car too. There was this one girl who actually scraped her own car in the school parking lot while driving mine she crashed my car into hers because she was trying to like be cool and like park quickly like reverse park quickly next to her car the thing is she was one of the three range rover girls so she you know had a reverse cam and shit. i didn't have a reverse cam so she didn't know how to do it in my car it's like i get my morality from spongebob right i'm gonna drive like spongebob i'm not trying to be a mrs puff always stressed out fucking ptsd dead spouse like i'm not trying to live like that kind of shitty lifestyle where I have like anxiety attacks all the time, anger management issues, you know, because that's what she is. She's a puffer fish. That's like clearly the underwater archetype of getting outraged all the time and like just exploding at people. Like we're not on no fucking boating school shit, right? Like if someone, I'm teaching someone how to drive a car because they don't, they don't know how to drive. I'm like, oh yeah, you could drive my car. I'll show you how to do it. And then they crash my car and I'm like, oh well, try again. But yeah, um, what I was saying is the insurance company, they'd be like, yo, just to get the paint here, it would cost more than the entire fucking car. Like, we can't fix this, but we'll buy the car off you. We'll just take it off your hands. And they paid a premium for that. So they bought the car and that went directly towards my second car, which was my Subaru WRX. And I love the WRX, but man, I miss, I miss my first car. I miss the dents and the scratches. 
I finally understood why Mater didn't want his dents fixed in the movie Cars 2. Like, those dents on my car, like, they were from different experiences in my life with my friends. They were marks of adventure, signatures from our journey that we took together, battle scars really. So many occasions where he brushed so close to death and just laughed it off. That car was a representation of who I was. I was responsible for all those dents, nobody else. If you want to fix the dents, you don't fix the car, you fix me. Like you change my personality so that I stop driving so recklessly so that way the dents don't happen in the first place. But I did cause those dents. If it wasn't for me, the car would have been worth a lot more. But also, if I was somebody else to where I wouldn't drive like that and the car would, would have been worth a lot more, I wouldn't have had nearly as much fun as I did. Like if I walk into a room and people look at me and they go, wow, what a clean person, very well maintained. That would be a lie. That would not happen. And it's the same, the car is representation of that. People did not look at my car in the parking lot and think, ooh, that's a... I want to go steal from that car. I hope he has some valuables in there. Like, bring on the dents. Bring on the scars of battle. As long as I don't die, I'll take them on gladly. Because each one of them is a story to tell. And that is worth something that money can't buy. It's funny because everyone else in the school parking lot, they did not give a fuck about their cars. The car guys treated their cars like little babies. Like, they would not let them you know, get even a speck of dirt on it. And then all the spoiled girls would get like the most expensive looking cars in the lot and they wouldn't care about it. They'd act like, oh, I have this Mercedes, but I wanted a Porsche. The average normie would have, you know, whatever car their parents buy and they would just like, they, they wouldn't think, it, they would just look at it as like a machine, as like no greater than the sum of its parts. They wouldn't look at it as like an art form. It's something that just takes them from point A to point B and they wouldn't think twice about it. They probably don't even know what the name of the car is that they drive. This is so stupid actually, because girls like to be quirky and go like, oh, I don't know what car I drive. Like they think it's cool to not know what car they drive. They think it's girly or whatever, which is like, no, girls are open-minded, right? Which means they're artists, which means they, they appreciate the beauty in things, which means they should like cars more. Girls are literally like told a lie and they just go with it. If there's like a girl and she doesn't, she's not into cars like that. Like she doesn't look at a car and go like, wow, what a beautiful work of art. If, if there's a girl that, that doesn't think that way, she's inauthentic, straight up. She's just following trends. She's a normally following trends, just doing what other people do rather than actually being herself and realizing the beauty in these cars. Like I talk to these girls and, oh, what kind of car do you have? They'd be like, oh, I don't know, it's black. And like, they know what they're doing. The color of your car does not matter nearly as much as the model or the make of it. How do you not know what make of the car you have? You have a BMW, you have a Toyota, like it doesn't, like how would you not know that? And it's like, I know they know that because they know the brands of other cars. Like I'd ask them like, okay, what kind of, what are some attractive cars? Oh, I like Jeeps. I like that kind of thing, which is like, again, just trendy. Being into cars, like genuinely into cars nowadays would teach you just how pathetic the modern woman is. They think it's cool to not view cars as anything more than just something that takes you to point A to, from point A to point B. But it's like, you have no imagination then. I mean, I expect like the people that, that watch my shit, the people that watch my videos are authentic. So I expect all of you guys to, if, if you're not into cars and you're into something as much as I'm into cars, right? So you understand what I'm saying. There's more depth than just the utility of the thing. Like your first, I don't know, guitar guys can probably relate. Gun guys can probably relate. Like a person's first car, a car guy's first car will always be their best car. Even though it was 185 horsepower shitbox, I still miss it more than anything. Oh my God, I would pay obscene amounts of money to get that car back. I can't now, it was stripped and sold for parts. But yeah, shout out to everyone who keyed my car, except for those, actually, you know what? It, it's a representation of who I was at the time and my character arc. I don't give a fuck that these girls, they weren't rocking me, that they're not like real, that they just abandoned me when I was at my lowest. Fuck it. It was who I was and they ended up keying it. Shout out to everyone who keyed my car. I remember I tell the girls, I'd be like, you want to sign your name on my car? Some of them put their initials, but nobody ever signed their name. The, and, and the normies would be like, no way, I, I don't want to key your car. And they were like shocked. It, it's it's like normie mentality. Like you can't key your car. Why not? Like I can't understand that. Like what goes through their heads? Like it's not even greed because they're not losing any money. I'm the one losing money. It's like they can't fathom the idea that maybe someone else does things for fun and not money. And so they're like terrified of me because they can't understand me. Like if someone tells me like, hey, a frost, key my car. I'll gladly key it. I'll draw the fucking Mona Lisa on that bitch. Rest in peace to Shaniqua. It was a black car. That's why I called it Shaniqua. It's a black car. Cars are girls, usually the archetype of cars. It was 185 horsepower shitbox that could barely go up a hill. 
Shanique was the name of a of a girl that had been like passed around a lot. Regardless, you will be missed. Oh, and I had sex with a girl in the back of the car. I'm pretty sure a few other people also used my car for sex too. Before it was my car, of course. Damn, I'm gonna have to edit this VOD. Because you'll see details, but it says, First of many, congrats, my friend. And this is Raheem Somani's first ticket. We looked at tickets like like certificates of accomplishment, of achievement, of greatness. Like, remember I told you guys I would get tickets all the time. There was actually one time I got three tickets in one month. It was this one, this one, and this one. I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit more of an extreme battle scar. I, I forgot what I was talking about in that video, but I was on some real shit back then. Yeah, yeah, look, look, look this right here. See that? That's how you know it's a black diamond. Look, right here is Nick's Mustang, and right here is Shauner's V6 Honda Accord Coupe. Oh yeah, this was the Bass Pro hat that fell out as we were doing rolling shots. Phase out his head out the window, and then this one fell on the road. I also, oh, I already told the story of the fake gun, the prop gun that I used to keep in my car, which is like a really... Really stupid idea, honestly. I was straight up, I was taking more risks than Luffy, bro. I felt like I was invincible. I drove like a fucking maniac everywhere. And I kept the gun inside the tear, like inside this hole inside my seat, which I found out, because the more that it ripped, the more that I could like put stuff in there. I found that it was actually a great place to put drugs, which it's not even that I did drugs. Dude, I was so, I used to smuggle drugs. Now that I think about it, it wasn't even for me. It was just like a random dude would be like, hey, uh, I got these fucking pills. I'm trying to drop it off to this guy. Can you drop it off to him? And I'm like, oh yeah, sure, no problem. I got you. That's what you do. If you want to trap, but you don't even have a car, find someone who is all about adventure, who is also rich, like I was. Because these guys literally could have used me as their Pablo Escobar, which they did to a certain extent, but not to the level that they could have. I probably would have gotten caught because I was speeding everywhere all the time and I would just have all this shit out. I'm really glad I never got pulled over for any of this, like while I had any of this stuff in the car, which is like, this is actually a cool little thing right here, which is this was like a spot that you could put, it was a perfect holder for a phone. And this spot right here was the perfect holder for like a cart and then like another pen, which is, I mean, I would keep this shit in my car occasionally, but not that often. I had my nail cutter in there too. I had my like shaver in the uh, middle compartment, all that stuff. There's the wax. Oh yeah, I was sending that video to someone. I was like selling, like he was like, oh, what kind of weed you got? And then I sent him that video. Oh yeah, and my car had a Prindle too. P, park, reverse, neutral, drive, and low. Like these are the kinds of things you want in your first car. I had a lot of like, my gas cap thing, I never knew it was supposed to be attached because it was just broken. I believe it's like a legal thing. Like it has to have like a string attaching it. I didn't even know that until I was like 17. Also the part that's like above the gas cap, like the cap on top of the cap, that was like flush with the car, like, you know, the painted part. Normally for like a typical car, like you'd press the button on the inside, like next to the steering wheel or whatever, right? And, or maybe it's on the ground, maybe you flip a lever or something like that, and it'll open up. However, in my car, this weird thing happened where it's like, when I pull the latch, the cap would like only move, it would just barely move. So that way when I let go of the latch, the cap would go back into its position and it would lock again. So I wouldn't be able to pull it out. So what I had to do is I had to put my fingernails underneath the cap with my right hand. Then on my left hand, I had to reach all the way inside, like next to the steering wheel, press the button and use my fingernails to pry it open. It took like my entire wingspan to do it. And there were a couple times, I think it was like after I worked out or something like that, where it's like, I didn't have the flexibility to do it. So I actually, I like took off my shoes and used my toe to press the button. Later on, near the end of when I owned the car, you know, after doing all the experimenting and stuff, I found out that there was actually like a little exploit to make sure it got opened without me needing to do that, where I would press it two times in a row, like rapidly, like I'd press it, I'd be, it would be like, one, two, one, two, one, two, repeatedly like that. And I would do that a handful of times. And after like 10 seconds, it would finally be open enough to where I could just open the latch and I wouldn't need to pry it open while pressing the button. Also the seatbelt, uh, the driver's seat seatbelt, my seatbelt, would not go back up. And that was like halfway through owning it. I know like a lot of other people have that kind of problem where like the seatbelt won't go back up because it gets like stuck on the top or whatever. But no, it like straight up stopped working. I wouldn't go back up at all. I had to tuck it into the corner every time I got out of the car, which is actually kind of, 
Now that I think about it, I didn't have any safety sitting there. I would, I would have just flew forward. I had the airbags, but that's it. And you know what else? Even after all this, you know what my friends had as a nickname for my car? All reliable. <laughs> Early on, at one point, I was like, I was like 15. This is before I had a license. I still had a permit. I was racing some random dude at a stoplight. We did a dig. Um, and this was on the road, like outside my house. And I lost, obviously. And it felt like just another day, right? Because I would just do this all the time. Turns out my mom was in the car behind me. I was still new to driving. I hadn't developed the sense of like awareness. I hadn't developed the radar to notice familiar cars around me. I, I was able to notice like a few cars of like my brother's friends and stuff, but not my mom up until that point. I pulled into my neighborhood and then I saw her pull in right behind me. I saw her in my mirror and I was like freaking out because I'm like, oh my God, she just saw me race someone. We both pulled in the driveway. She hopped out. It's super scary moment turns out she didn't even notice i was racing because she was in her mercedes it's not like the fastest car in the world but it's no slouch and my car was so slow that even though i was flooring it she didn't even know i was racing for her it was just like regular driving it's a car that you can have so much fun in because from the inside you feel like you're like driving the shit like a gta like it's simpsons hit and run but on the outside it's like there's other cop magnets that the cops are actually looking for they're not even paying attention to your car oh my god there was this I wish I had a video of this. I think my mom might have a video or something. I can't believe I forgot this part of the story. There's probably a lot of parts of the story that I'm forgetting. Before I was old enough to drive, I must've been like 13 or something. My brother was, he took the car in our backyard and he started trying to like drift it around. It's a front wheel drive car. To be fair, I was doing the same thing. Top of the AMC parking garage, even in our neighborhood and stuff. So he was in, in high school. So it wasn't like that big of a deal. After like traveling for a bit and like seeing a bit of the world, I understand that like the community i grew up in was like a bunch of fucking hooligans i know that now actually i told the story about sham right the first guy i ever did photography for when he was in high school when sham was in high school kill a sham on instagram he drifted his mercedes-benz amg gts onto the school's football field destroyed the whole thing like the gts is already like a hundred thousand dollar plus car i think and so paying the fifty thousand dollars or whatever it was to repair the um football field like his parents didn't have any problem with that they did that at a greater atlanta christian school so yeah in like in the community that we grew up in around the ismailis around people from atlanta around all this stuff i get for most cities like what we did with our cars was like hooligan type shit, but it really wasn't that big of a deal to drift your car in your backyard and get it stuck in the mud. I wonder how fast the car would have been if we didn't abuse it so much. Oh man, it had it had potential. But then again, it was also, we were car guys. You know, we were in the fantasy world of watching Tokyo Drift like once a month and things like that and saying all these quotes from it. You know, we turn off the AC to get like 0.001 more horsepower, but you feel like you're hitting the fucking NOS button. And like, if you really want to be optimal about it, you do all that stuff. You'd roll up the windows, you turn off the music, any computers, uncharge everything, right? Uh, uh, like disconnect all the plugs. But um, we were so into the fun aspect of it that no matter what we did, we always had to have music running. So it's like, even when we were racing, we're going to have music blasting at full volume. I remember one time I actually beat a stock V6 Challenger. And of course, I beat a bunch of manual transmission cars because manuals are fucking slow. I beat all the Camrys. I beat all the Volvos, stuff like that. I, the majority of people that I was beating were like other high school kids who had been given hand-me-downs who just floored it nonstop, didn't worry about the consequences. So they were also fucking up their cars. I'm so lucky I never got ticketed for street racing, dude. I'm so lucky. I got tickets for speeding quite a few times, but never for street racing. That would have fucked me up. And even when I would get tickets for reckless driving, it was always like, it was really lucky situations. They never caught me with like uh, my head out the sunroof or shit like that. I'm glad I found these pictures and these videos. It reminds, like it's, it's such a nice reminder to be like, oh yeah, I lived a fucking fun childhood. Like I had a fun life. I can't really be upset at things. I'm only grateful. I'm a lucky person. How could I not be happy? I'm a happy person. Straight up. Things like this. Looking back and reminiscing about things like this reminds me, I am a happy person. That's what it means to be lucky. It's like, yeah, there's dents and damages and all that stuff. And it's going to diminish the cost of the, the, the price of the car, the value of the car. But it's like the dents are stories. I get to have stories. Not everybody gets to have that. I was with a different person every time I scratched my car, every time I dented my car. So it's like a time capsule of my personality and my motivation and my character and my growth, my like life, you know? And nowadays people are such fucking losers. They put materialistic things on such a pedestal that they don't use them to further their character. 
Like they, they spend money on buying things that literally make their lives worse. They're literally buying into problems. Like my brother has like at least a dozen jackets, like expensive jackets, and he spends so much time looking for them and buying them. He'd buy like a $100, $200 like Armani jacket or some shit like that. It's just the same job as a $15 jacket. And because it was expensive, he saw value in it. And this like ruins you. Like don't buy into these things that you need to maintain. Because every single time I'd be like, oh, I need a jacket real quick. I'd like wear one of the jackets that was in the closet and it would act like I'd actually take his jacket he would like scream at me. He's like, why are you wearing that? Why would you make the slight adjustments and move the hoodie slightly on the side like this? You can't rest it like that. You'll get it creased. Like, holy shit. How miserable do you have to be to focus on this stuff? We'd literally be going around in our car, like fucking yelling slurs out the window. We like drove by our school's prom, fucking yelled at the window like, hey, the prom queen was a guy, which it was. It was a trans girl. I would like pretend to be using the Teptronic even though I knew it wasn't working, but it just felt like it was the same thing as when my older brother would give me a controller that was off while he was playing Halo while he, because he wanted to play by himself. And he would just be like, oh, you're playing, you're playing. And I would just be pretending to be playing, basically. It was the same same sort of thing. And I loved it. All these people, like, they don't, they really don't deserve the money they have. Because they buy things that literally makes them less happy. Like, why would you do that? Why would you go buy a Tesla, BMW, whatever? Why would you do that? What's the reason for that? Like, you're buying into trends and trying to please people that you don't even like. Like, dude, if, you, if you're not into cars like that, just buy a fucking Toyota Camry. It's that simple. But that's just how the world works, man. Like, I will spend $10,000 on a car and I will get more value out of it and have more fun with it than a normie who spends $100,000 on a car. When Noah crashed and all, like, the rocks fell on my hood and all that shit, I never asked him for compensation or anything. Why would I? This shit was worthless. It had more sentimental value than anything. And him crashing it, like, I should have, if anything, I should have paid him. I would have been like, hey, thanks for raising the sentimental value of my car. Like, buying an expensive car relative to, like, your income. Expensive can mean whatever, but just a car that costs a lot for you, like, based on how much you make, It'll literally make you worry more. Why would you want that? Don't you want to spend money to get rid of your worries? Like the worry of financial freedom and all that stuff? Why would you want to add more worries? Why would you want to add more problems to yourself? Everyone's like, oh, more more money, more problems, right? It doesn't have to be. If you have more money and you're fucking stupid and you spend money on like what the masses convince you should spend money on, then you'll have more problems. Not because it's just like a concept of like having more money, but because you're a fucking idiot with the way that you spend it. If you can afford to buy a fucking Porsche Taycan, dude, just... Get like a Subaru WRX and then have fun with that car. Manual transmission. It's an all-rounder. You could take it off-road as much as you want and like really drive it like a real car. Fucking shred the tires to their metal, you know? If you want to go to a place like slightly faster, like a millisecond faster, you can curb it and things like that. Maxing out launch control every time. Money shifting occasionally. Fuck it. Why not? Don't follow the attitude of my brother. Use your money to buy your way into a simple simpler and easier life with less headaches and if you're capable of buying a fucking hundred dollar jacket and treating it like it's worth fifteen dollars so you have that kind of money then that's totally cool but don't buy problems for yourself if you're at that level don't buy a thousand dollar jacket don't buy a thirty five hundred dollar coat like he'd literally say like don't sit on the couch a certain way in the basement because it'll crinkle up the couch what do you think couches are for you want me to fucking sit crisscross applesauce and even if it does crease who gives a fuck? Why does it matter? What are you, are you like a fucking couch model? Like, is there going to be people that come through? Oh, your couch is creased. Oh, we're not going to pay you for this modeling gig. Like, dude, sit on the creased couch. It's for sitting on. I hate that attitude of like these people that like buy these like fucking boring ass, like shitty blankets just because they like match the sheets and all this shit. It's like they go to bed with the thought in their mind like, wow, this bed it has an aesthetic look to it that nobody cares about and I'm going to be asleep while I'm on it, but it sure is uncomfortable. Oh, well, I'm glad I made the right choices and I have the right priorities in life. Like, what's going on in their brain? What are they thinking? Seriously. Like, fucking enjoy yourself. Enjoy your life. It pisses me off how, like, posh people are. And if you know me personally, fucking... You come through to my place, you don't even got to ask for permission. Wear your shoes on the fucking carpet. Jump on my fucking bed, dude. Wear your shoes while you're jumping on the bed. I don't give a fuck. Live life. I don't give a fuck how these things look because I would sacrifice looks for functionality any day. And fun is part of functionality. Totally fuck. That, was, that pun was not intended. But it was kind of intended halfway through. Damn, that's a quote. Can I quote it? Hold on. 
it would be cool if it would if it would be like I'd rather have the fun in functionality over the over the blank in uh, form or looks or something like that. If there's some word that goes into the, if it makes sense, damn, I wish there was something like that. That would have been cool. That would have been a great quote. But yeah, that's the story. That's the story of, it wasn't even my first car. This was like our, it was a lot of people's car at the same time. Maybe not their first car, but it was, it was a canvas for us to paint on, for us to paint our memories on it. And not even in the way that we keyed it. Like just in, in like sitting in there and throwing things in the back seat, like putting all this equipment back there and it would be like sharp and it would make a hole in, in the seat and things like that. And we'd look back and be like, oh yeah, that's from the gimbal part, you know? Without any of those, you know, dents and imperfections and all that stuff, it is just another Lexus. But with them, like it's got some real personality to it. It's got a story. And I'm, I'm proud to call that my first car. That was my car. It was my ticket to to transport myself anywhere I wanted to go. Ever, your first car, if you're really an adventurous person, your first car is is a vessel of freedom. It's a pirate ship. It's it's your ability to, to you know, when, like, when you play your first video game, that's like, it's completely open. There's no invisible walls anymore to the world around you. And you look around and you go like, that mountain over there, you can climb it. Like all that Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild shit and all that. It's like, that's the world just opens up. In a world of like a non-stop, mind-numbing, nine to five with all this like school and meaningless work and then death and just people just living their life day to day miserable with, you know, people they don't even like working, making like $10 an hour so that they can make their boss $50 an hour, sacrificing their own dreams to help somebody else achieve theirs. In this blue trap bubble, I was able to have a glimmer of hope, a, a, a ship of freedom i ha i owned it it was it was my owner of course it was under my dad's name but like it was really because of what i did to it it was my car it was mine and only mine and nobody else's the broken subwoofer the right side door that was super loud when it opened because it had like some popping thing that happened the left side door that didn't open the windows that barely worked the shitty muffled exhaust all the paint chips everywhere, the check engine light that was on so frequently that I got burned into my gauge cluster, all of it. It was all mine and I wouldn't have had it any other way. And I, I like I told my, I, I told my little cousins, she's 17, she might be 18 now, I think she's 18, but I told her, her dad and her together when they were together, um, when she was like 15 or 16 or something like that, she was about to get a car and I said like, oh dude, you got to get like get a hand-me-down or get like a minivan or something so that way you could take out the back seats and have all your homies back there and like throw parties in the back and stuff and she was so grossed out she's like ew i don't want a minivan and she ended up getting like a relatively new like only a couple years old lexus that was like thirty thousand plus dollars forty thousand maybe and then after that recently she's like 18 and she got a fifty five thousand dollars mercedes which i showed in, in the stream the other day i showed the pictures of it and I tried to convince my other cousin and her parents. I tried to be like, yo, 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 get, like have her get a manual car, have her get something like that, you know? And then she ended up getting a Tesla. And it's like, parents think that they're doing this stuff. They, they think that like, I'm saying this thing and it might have some merit, but you know, we can go the other way and we can give our kids a fun car in this other way because I'm sure a Fraz would have had all that fun in like this other expensive car. So maybe this is an even better option. It's like, no, no, you're just plain and simple wrong. If you want your kid to have a fun first car, seriously, a fun first car, you get them something that's old, slow, safe, and has a bunch of random quirks and features because that's what they're really going to remember and that's what they're going to look at is like this is what makes my car unique and it'll be a reflection of their own individuality they'll they'll imprint their personality onto it it doesn't matter who owns that car after me if they put the car back together whatever that lexus es330 2005 is forever and always my car and nobody else's but it was so fucking fun not because it was a good car, but because it was my first car. And if you're really with the shit, and if you're really with the shit out there, if you're a kid and you don't have your first car yet, and you want a really nice first car, or your parents are thinking about getting you a really nice first car, and they're not, they don't understand the, the, what it means to, to have a life of adventure, then be smarter than that, right? 
Be like, I don't want you to get me like a $25,000 first car. Give me the $25,000. I'll buy a car for $5,000 and I'll spend the $20,000 traveling or, or starting a business or printing merch so that we can throw some car meets or things like that, you know? Like that's what you do. You have to, at this point, so many parents are so, like they don't think these things through and they think that what I'm saying has a little bit of merit when they don't realize, no, I'm 100% right. So they just dismiss what I say. And so if your parents are like that, you have to be smarter than that. And you have to take it into your own hands and say, no, I don't want an expensive car. I don't want a nice first car. I want a fun first car that I can use to its fullest, that I can treat like the utility that it is not to put the car on a pedestal, but to begin to begin my own journey and to learn about the world and myself and about my friends when they hop in my car and, and the jokes that we have and the laughs that we have and the cries that we have and in the tough moments when we're together and we have all this anxiety because we crash into this other car and laying in the back seat with the blanket and the pillow like I showed her in the earlier thing. I had the SpongeBob blanket in the back seat and sleeping back there so that we can go to the airport in the morning and all this stuff. All the memories you will have in your first car, you want to have it with a car that's well, well, well below your means. If you can only afford a $5,000 car, then buy a $1,000 car car and if you can't afford to like take it to a mechanic to fix it shit bro fix it yourself that's part of the adventure and it's advent an adventure that i never got to have so if anything you might have an even greater adventure than me and to anyone watching i want nothing more than that i want nothing more than people to reach their potential it's just a shame whenever i see someone that has their first car or second car and it was bought for them and it's something really expensive and really luxurious and high maintenance. And it's like high maintenance is literally a psyop. People are convinced that high maintenance is like something that's like quirky and like a personality trait for these girls just so that they can get them to buy more shit. It's literally just a psyop to sell shit. Like, no, you don't want to be high maintenance and you don't want to have people around you or things around you that are high maintenance. You want to be simple. There's a great virtue in choosing to live a simple and humble life. But yeah, that's, uh, that's all I got. Oh wait, I actually have one more video. That's pretty much all I got. Okay, bye guys.